Hey guys, this is the first part of what will be a three-part series with a major contributor to the Foundry community, Ripper. This is a complete walkthrough of Ripper's 40 plus modules, both the free and the premium ones, including some brand new things that you haven't seen before. So if you're already familiar with some of them, just skip through the timestamp chapters, but I, I promise you'll find out new things just like I did. And as always, if you want to support my content or to get all of the assets you see in these videos, consider visiting my Patreon linked in the video description. And of course, likes and comments will help others to find this. So with that, let's jump in. Hey everybody, this is Bailey Wiki, and today I've got a guest. Uh, this is somebody who has been an innovator in the Foundry ecosystem for um, probably at least the last year. And uh, in what we're gonna do today, this is actually Ripper. Hey Ripper, how you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. It's uh, actually coming very close to the one year since I've started uh, with Foundry. That sounds about right. Uh, it was about a year ago when you started doing some some interesting things that certainly got my attention. Uh, and the reason I wanted to have you on today is because you've done a lot. You've been pretty prolific in terms of module development. Yeah, some might say that. Yeah, it, it, so much so that I don't even know everything that you've done. And I've been supporting you uh, for I think since you started, um, and and you still continue to produce so much stuff that that I I don't even keep up with it. So I thought that everyone would like to actually do a deep dive into all of the things that you produce as a module developer. Uh, yeah, so I'll be honest, I struggle as well to keep track of all the stuff I have. Uh, I have around uh, forty modules at this point. We can like uh, see some of the more. Um, some of the larger ones, let's say, to have an idea. But yes, I do have uh, quite a lot of stuff. It's too much probably to do in one session, so we'll probably break this up into a couple of pieces. But you know, you have a ton of free modules, and I want to walk through what some of those are because some of them are pretty important. If if you know, for DMs that uh, just want quality of life or to enhance combat or to to like design maps, uh, but you also have stuff behind a paywall, and some people may not know what that stuff does or looks like. And so I thought it would be also be good to show everyone what like what all what's your like entire um you know library look like because there's some really important things that you're also doing that do sit behind a paywall because of course you have to like like make all of this stuff work uh, like i do you know we're looking for supporters to help us and you're not paying me for this at all this is really just me as somebody in the community who's interested and a fan of what you do to really look at like um, everything that you do do and let some of the dms kind of uh, understand everything that you've got out there and figure out what they might want to take advantage of yeah, and like I have to say that uh, I'm very thankful to you, like not uh, specifically for this video, but uh, you are a big part of uh, what I've become today. A lot of the modules uh, when I've started came from uh, like some interaction between us. Let's uh, let's call it like that. Well, I'll tell you for everybody, I, I had been thinking of levels, what you ultimately developed for some time, and I had asked a lot of developers, like really talented developers in the ecosystem, like, hey, this has got to be possible to do three-dimensional building of in of, of scenes. And they were like, no, nah, it's not possible. And and then I saw you put out Better Roofs, which was sort of the predecessor, or it, not the predecessor, the, it came after sort of the original, um, what was it even called? It was a roofs module, overhead. Uh, roofs and overhead tiles, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you came out with Better Roofs, and I was like, wow, yeah, he really made roofs work and i i just like i wonder i wonder if this guy uh could do this and and i remember i reached out and we we chatted about it and you originally said no it's not possible and then like i think it was like two days later you came up you popped out of nowhere and said hey look i made it work and all of a sudden that was where levels was really born and all of a sudden we had this like entirely new dimension for designing scenes yeah, uh, Levels was quite the journey. Uh, at first, uh, I'm pretty sure I approached you with like, yeah, do you do you want to use better roofs? Like, are you interested in this, uh, in your modules? Because I was looking at your maps. I was using uh, your free maps at the time. And uh, I saw them and I was like, what, what the hell are all these walls? What is this? Because at the time, to have the walls show, it was a nightmare of walls. I think there are still some remnants of your old maps somewhere, and it was uh, truly a nightmare. And I came to you, was like, yes, this can be way easier. That's true. It was it was a total hack to get around the limitations of 
what we had uh, originally uh, just to make roofs look right, um, l- you know, let alone, you know, actual levels and other things like that. So, yeah, you did. You reached out and I said, hey, this is a better way. I wonder. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was great. It was good to see that. And it spawned all kinds of creativity across the the Foundry ecosystem, not not just within my little corner of the Internet. And so, yeah, so let's maybe let's start there. Let's just for those who don't know. Let's just talk about, like I call it the triumvirate, the levels triumvirate, right? It's the three modules that work together to make this kind of three-dimensional mapping work. And this is not going to be a tutorial on that. Everyone, I'll link to um, to my levels tutorials here for those who haven't used it already. But maybe, uh, you know, just show us like what we're looking at. We're just looking at one of my scenes. This is a, a tower, a clockwork tower. And it's levels enabled. And maybe, you know, just give us the high points on those three modules and then maybe anything that's, that's new that's worth pointing out. Yeah. So... Uh... This is truly, yes, like the trifecta of modules required to make all this thing work. And it is indeed a, a very well-constructed ecosystem, or some would call it a house of cards. But uh, it does allow you to build any amount of levels in any direction vertically in your map. So this uh, is one of your maps, the... Um, the clockwork temple and we can see we can open the levels ui and i will share you share a trick with everyone watching that if you right click the levels icon here it directly opens the ui without the need to go into the menu but we can go through the levels and all these levels are in the same map so previously we needed to either use separate scenes and use teleports or have like multiple copies of the same map on different level on the same map and still use teleports. Um, this new way of making uh, this like verticality not only is uh, most of the time is more uh, performance uh, effective, it's like it's less expensive to run than having a, a, an insane, insanely large scene, but it also keeps everything in the same map so you don't get lost like switching between maps hunting for your players if you have a combat it's gonna be a nightmare and stuff like that so the idea was really have seamless combat in the in a single map and we can see that if we explore with our token here simply changing elevation will bring us to uh, different levels and there's a bunch of automated um, ways yeah. to change your elevation between not only what you've got baked into levels, but we've, we've done things on like Monk's Active Tiles on how to just, you know, make transitions between levels. But it's pretty seamless and it works great when you're trying to maintain just one combat experience, for example, across all of them. Yeah, the combat is really the highlight. And another interesting thing uh, about levels that is not very well known, so I, I do like to point it out. Point it out that levels is not uh, really creating levels. I know this like sounds crazy, but it doesn't work on a levels system. Level is a completely dynamic system. That means that we could have in this same exact map, another tower with a completely different configuration of elevation and levels. And it will all work like seamlessly in the same map. And this is especially relevant if you have like a, a little town and you have like some houses with like three floors, but maybe one house has like each floor is 10 feet. Another one is like 20 or 15 or whatever number you want. The same scene can allow for multiple buildings with different elevations and the site still gets calculated correctly. Yeah, it's cool. I've got some maps built like that to take advantage of it. It's, it's great. And uh, yeah, so levels as we as as we've discussed uh uses leverages two other modules one is better roofs with which is like my first module and the other one is wall height that i've recently uh taken over and uh it's like it's at this point it was like very convenient to me since the current the previous maintainer could no longer maintain it and i was like yeah like i i use like this module is so crucial to my work that like i might as well so now they're all under the same uh, wing. That's great because they, they, and, they do uh, rely yeah. on each other so much. It's uh, I, I was relieved to see um, you take that over. Yeah, so we can make sure that all the three modules keep working together correctly. And just to make some distinction, wall height and better roofs are two modules that work independently. Like you can just use 
better roofs, you can just use wall height. Levels requires both, of course, but uh, there is kind of a um, subdivision of uh, labor between the modules. So wall height handles the walls, of course, and it does handle uh, in some capacity lights as well. Better roofs, of course, handles uh, not only the roofs, but also the underlying polygon system that is very crucial to levels. I don't think we're going to go in depth into this system in this video, but it's uh, the system that determines like how the 3D collisions are calculated. That's all you need to know for now. And yeah, so basically these two modules kind of set the groundwork for level to build on top and actually do its work to stack levels on top of each other. And really uh, levels was quite a journey because the biggest struggle was figuring out a way to handle um, uh, like token vision, like which token is visible, which one is not. Because originally uh, I had a system that kind of tried to figure out like in which building you were in which floor and like do some like weird logic to figure out if you could see tokens. But it was always an issue like if I have a token on the, on the ground and I want to like see a token on a roof, how can I do that without it like looking like it doesn't make sense, right? And with the layer system that was basically what levels was initially, that could not work because if a token was on a roof, you would see it like no matter where this token was. Like if it was like miles away on the other, completely on the other side of the building, it would have been um, basically nonsensical. So let's say we have a building in this rect rectangle here. If a token is like 60 feet up on the far off corner of this roof, you would still see it. So that was the biggest journey, figuring out a way to make site work. And in the end, uh, I settled with like the 3D site that we have now that actually does like 3D ray calculations to figure out which token is visible. Now, what what is uh, anything new that you want to talk about? Because again, this isn't going to be a deep dive into levels, but is there yeah. anything that's sort of, because I know you've got some debugging stuff that I find really interesting. You've got uh, some of your uh, wall height, uh, components there anything you want to show us of course like we have some new stuff that recently was added to levels so one of the biggest struggles with levels was dealing with polygons uh, i know it's not um let's say a user-friendly experience but it's kind of a necessary evil for levels to work so i kind of tried to make things a bit easier for the users uh, and let them figure out easily if something is wrong with the map that will like break site or something like that. So now in levels, we have this neat uh, debugging tool here. And what this does is it examines all the polygons in your scene and tries to figure out if some of them um, are misconfigured because maybe the auto detection failed because on some complex wall configuration, it can fail or you manually define it wrong. So we have this little tool that you can click and it will tell you, yes, all these tiles, like their polygons are broken. And in your case, like in this map, we have a lot of like the stairs. So for example, like these tiles, like we don't really care about those polygons, but we, we can see that like the polygon, like for this tile uh, is set as broken. And you can see that like it doesn't close properly and it's in red. So when you open the tile, it will show you, yes, this tile is broken. You need to fix it. And it will also give you a warning here. That's fantastic because that, uh, that is a big yeah. part of designing in levels is just knowing when something is off. And so this uh, makes it really easy to identify those. Exactly. And then we also have a new feature. This is still in development. It's not yet public. It might be by the time this video goes up, but, uh, I have a new feature in wall height that will show you the height of the walls like directly on the walls, as you can see. So this will give you at a glance, will give you an idea of like where walls are because it's kind of easy to get lost. And uh, the tooltips are a bit of annoying. We can all agree that the tooltips are kind of annoying. I turn them so, off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this uh, can give us a very quick glance of like, yes, all my walls are correct. I don't have like random walls at infinity or something like that. So uh, this is hopefully going to be live uh, soon, TM. Super helpful. 
Okay, great. And yes. Okay. All the levels here. <laughs> all right. So let's keep on this levels track because you have a few modules that sort of, you know, play in this family of, of levels and, and three dimensionality. Uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of go to some other stuff. Uh, let's talk about some of the other free modules that apply here. And then we'll kind of go behind the paywall and we'll look at some of these, um, some of these other premium modules that you've got. So let's start with, uh, you've got something called tile sorter, which I use all the time. What's that? Uh, yes. Tile sort is a very useful module. So, you know, sometimes you find yourself in that situation where you have like a bunch of tiles that are kind of stacked and you don't know like what is where. Or maybe we can have like some weird situation where our tile is here and the other one is on the bottom and we cannot select it. We have like to move it if, I, if you want to move this one. So what tile sort does is kind of uh, comes to the rescue and try to help you solve the problem. So as you can see, it will give us a list of all the tiles on the map. Now, we are working in the background layer. As you can see, we don't have the foreground layer enabled. I'm not going to touch the foreground layer because if we go there, we have like a, a million tiles, let, let's say like that, something like that, because the, this map is kind of massive. Yeah, it's absurd. But yes, we can see that if we over over these images, it will show us, yes, this tile is here. But yeah, let's do the demonstration back in the background. And uh, we have this market stall. This is like the bottom part and we have the, this is like the top side. But let's say we are in this kind of situation where the tiles are mismatched. We, can, we cannot move stuff. And tile sort does what it says in the description really. It helps you sort the tiles and it does sort the Z index. So if we move this tile up, now it's going to be above this one. And of course, it works like with everything else. So if I bring this up again, now it's on top again. So this is like one of the main functionalities. It also has another functionality. So let's say I have a bunch of tiles that are on top of my market stall here, and I want to move my market stall. It's going to be a nightmare because I have to move all the tiles that are above, and then go behind, move the market, move back the tiles. So the other thing that tiles are does is this hide button here that lets you hide a tile. And now, we can move and work on this tile while the tile on top is hidden and out of sight and it doesn't get moved accidentally and we don't need to like redo our work multiple times and then we can just restore it and it's back. Love it. It's as simple but very effective. Anybody who's working with a lot of tiles or if you've used like, like uh, you know, you pull in a bunch of Forgotten Adventures tiles, right? And, and uh, into like a market and you've got a bunch of items sitting there, you know, all of a sudden your tiles start to stack up. So having things like tile sort to be able to move them around has been really great. Yeah, that is exactly why it was born. And uh, it makes this kind of work uh, that much more simple. Now there's another... Um, Another thing here, and we've we've got all these these leaves uh, flying around for some reason. It's actually not part of my scene as design, but we have it uh, enabled so that you can show the next module, which is Weather Blocker. Exactly. So Weather Blocker um, is a very simple module that lets you block the weather in a polygon. That's kind of a, the long and short of what it does, but it has some nice features uh, that kind of distinguish it from uh, other stuff that might do something similar, uh, because... Uh, you might not know, but also um, FX Master has a weather blocking functionality that spawned from Weather Blocker itself. But uh, Weather Blocker, there's something extra with it. So if we create our a polygon here, we can use it to block the weather. And I just enable this checkbox, update, and it will now block the weather in this area. Cool. The um, but that doesn't stop here because you know like you can do this with FX Master, but what this does differently and extra is it has levels interactions. So if we do give like a height to our drawing, so now it's infinity, but we can set it like to bottom zero, top nineteen. We update, and now we go to our token. You can see that like the weather here is blocked. Right. So if but I'm in a building, assume, if I'm yeah. in a building here at the first level, I'm not going to have that weather inside the building with me, which is the effect you want. Exactly. But what it does is that like if you change your elevation, so we go at 10, weather still blocked, but we go at 20 and now it's no longer blocking the weather. So you can restrict to this kind of like uh, boxes, cubes, the weather restriction. And this I, works with yeah. not only the the stock foundry weather, but also with FX Master? 
Exactly. Works with both. Yeah. That's great. I didn't even realize it it was it was levels aware. That's that's perfect. And uh, it also does another thing. So if you enable the weather blocker integration in better roofs, it will automatically uh, block weather inside uh, buildings. So we could quickly demonstrate this. Uh, let's move this to uh, an overhead tile. And so let's give it like a, a show. It's show is not going to work because we don't have walls, but we don't really care because we are just um, we're just kind of uh, showing up some stuff. And let's say this goes from 10 to infinity. So if we go in, you can see that the weather now it's blocked inside here. Oh, wow. So that's automatic. You just have to have weather blocker and then the tiles themselves will block the weather. Uh, not the tiles themselves, but the polygon uh, of the tiles will block the weather. And because it's uh, yeah, and because it's levels aware and better roofs aware, when we are on top of the roof, it automatically knows that it does it does not need to block the weather anymore. Oh man, where has this been? My, I, see, I need to pay more attention to what you're doing. This is great. Yeah, and uh, you, someone can just enable it in one of your maps, and it will like just work automatically. Okay, fantastic. All right, so that's the free stuff that's associated with levels, and that already is is really great. There's some stuff behind your paywall though that I want to talk about, and one of them is relatively new. I don't even know if you've launched it yet. This this depth blur module. Yeah, the uh, depth blur uh, just launched like a very like short time ago, and. Uh, yeah, it's a new module that adds some eye candy to level to levels. It's important eye candy. Um, it's not just eye candy too. It really helps with the yeah the perception of depth. Yeah, yeah, the perception of depth. Right. So what is it? So as it says, uh, it's a depth blur. Basically, what it does, it it blurs the map depending on your elevation, or more precisely, how far you are from a level. So we're gonna uh, just enable this checkbox. So I have the module enabled. There is no other configuration needed. This is your map we just used. So we just enable this checkbox. We save the settings. OK, so now that we've enabled Death Blur, we will see that there is something different in our map. So if we go up in elevation, you see that our background here is starting to blur. And if we go further up, it's going to get more blurry. And it's going to go on like this, depending on how high we go. And you can see that every level on this map is blurred uh, differently. Wow. So if we go all the way to the top, which is around here, we can see if we zoom in here, like on this section, that the background is very blurry, then this level is slightly less, then slightly less, then slightly less. We can see it like on these pipes. And then we reach this level, which is completely uh, visible and clear. Wow, that's amazing. It really does. That has always been the missing piece of, you know, these levels maps is being able to uh, perceive depth. And this is a big deal. Um, and I've seen some of your other sample videos. Um, I think you had Mad Cartographer and, and some other ones where yeah. it really it really does make all the difference uh, in terms of players just being able to so just sort of perceive that they have they have depth to the map. Yes, it definitely helps you um, understand how high you really are because sometimes uh, you know with just the numbers we forget how much distance that actually is. And the tokens are indeed uh, blurred as well. Okay, so you, you're showing me some three dimensionality that I've really enjoyed a lot. But you, you've kind of taken 3D like to a whole other level. Uh, this is another sort of premium area of your of your Patreon and your work. But what is all this 3D stuff I keep seeing from you? Well, uh, probably if uh, anyone that follows you have, has seen 3D Canvas at some point. Uh, of course, we, we are not going to go very in-depth on it because we are going to like keep talking for like two hours. There are so many features and so much stuff. But to keep it short, uh, it makes Foundry 3D, like true 3D. And it's I think it's easier to show it than uh, talk about it. This is another one of your uh, maps. And this castle, as we can see, has like a certain amount of levels. 
but you know at some point i was like yeah levels is cool but you know i cannot really tell like how big is this building like what's the scale compared to my token so that's when 3d canvas came uh, into existence and with a flick of a button we have our map in full 3d and this is fully constructed like just from 2d objects so this is just foundry walls foundry tiles and all that kind of stuff there is no like 3d modeling and this is kind of the beauty of it you can make something uh, um, in a very simple way and of course you can just drop your tokens and as you can see we have this beautiful token basis now we are using the 2d stand-ups but you can load in any 3d model that, that you want really and now uh, I'm going to show you one of the latest features that's been added to 3D Canvas. Since we are not going to really go super in depth, but I think this is pretty cool. So now it can sync with levels. So we can basically go around here, our uh, building, and simply explore it. And this, I think here there is a levels enable stair. So there we go. So it will bring us to this stair and we can decide on what level we want to go. So we can go to the archer post and now we are here and we only see this level and we can navigate here. Or we can go to the rampart and go to the windows and all the way to the top. Wow. So all of the stuff that I'm used to being able to do with my players on a levels enable thing, now I can do it in 3D because it's aware of, of all of these uh, levels. It removes them for me. I can navigate within the structures of the building, all that stuff exactly that's exactly what it does and of course uh, 3d canvas has like tons of other features from weather to fog of war uh, 3d templates lights like a lot of stuff but really this will make uh, navigating and exploring like a level scene way easier yeah i mean can i cast like spells and things that are animated and i mean don't you have there's a bunch of stuff that i haven't even fully explored yet that that I've I've seen your right. Yeah, there is like there is so much. Uh, just to mention a few, so I'm just gonna show you that if I go here and I go to my macros, you see we have this macros here, and this is actually a custom particle system uh, built in into. Um, into 3D Canvas and all the regular uh, Foundry interactions do work. Like I can just press T while I hover to target, like everything works. I, we have the token HUD and everything else, double click, open the sheet and all that stuff. And, but this, yeah, it's kind of the more neat stuff. You can see that what? we have like this fully customizable particle system and it's uh, relatively simple to use. And not only that, but also automated animation as like a graphical interface to configure this kind of stuff. And it goes like automatically with, uh, with uh, the attacks so yeah this is one of the things and there is so much uh, if you just open the 3d canvas tab in the scene settings you will see that it is indeed quite uh, a number of settings and uh, but yeah we have a lot we have the um, we have weather and you can see now we have the rain and this is like a fully custom weather system that's like super optimized it can handle up to two million uh, particles and we have like many many presets we can have even uh, the volumetric smoke here if we have like a city on fire or we can have um, one of my favorites the dust there we go we are in a dusty city and you know if all these presets are not enough for you not only that, but you can also have like two weathers at the same time. And if you are savvy with macros, you can have unlimited, an unlimited number of weather at the same time. But you can also make your own custom weather with like all these settings. So it is quite insane. And from, as you can see from the settings, there is a lot here. That is wild. You know, some people, they, they can get a little intimidated with all this stuff. Some people are like jumping right in and creating like whole worlds with, with 3D. But, you know, I, I always encourage DMs, you know, think about, you know, we're, we're here to like make really interesting and memorable experiences for our players. And think about like that big 
you know, boss fight that's coming up or that, that big crescendo to the story arc. And how can you use this type of, um, uh, experience to to give your players like you know they're not expecting it and they come in and they see this all of a sudden this 3d map and they're they're fighting the big boss in this 3d map and talk about engagement and thrill you know for for these players so you know if you're if you're not sure uh, how to like wade into the the 3d world you know think about investing in like kind of that one big experience and uh and kind of start there because um, this is this is outstanding yeah, and like every time I whipped out my 3D maps with my players, they were like, whoa, this is amazing. Because like once you're in 3D, you can really understand the scale of things. And because this, this, is, what, this is what Matt Mercer presents to his, his group. He just does it because they're all sitting in one room. But for those who don't have everyone sitting in one room, this creates, it opens up the ability for us to create those those tactically interesting maps in all of these different dimensions. Exactly. And I know that like a lot of people have made some uh, very clear, uh, have some very like clear question, complaints, uh, doubts on 3D Canvas. And one of the biggest one is like, you know, where are my 3D maps? Like, how do I make the 3D maps? Because, you know, for tokens, you can still use the 2D images and they look, you know, completely fine. You don't need like to have 3D models for everything, right? Uh, but the maps, like even a map like this, it does take quite a long time to set up and have everything correct. So I know that like one of the biggest problems for 3D to take off a bit more is like, yes, there are really no 3D maps. Sure, you can find some online, but the selection is maybe a bit limited. And so that's what the latest update for 3D Canvas um, really is about. And this, uh, you haven't seen it yet, and it's quite insane, let me tell you. So, yeah, let's say, you know, someone uses your map and is like, you know, I like this Bailey's map, but I wish there were more rocks in this map, you know? So now we have a full library of hundreds and hundreds of 3D assets that are available to use for all the 3D Canvas users. And you can just open your file picker. We have the 3D previews here in the corner and you can just slam a rock in. It's that easy. And there is everything in here. Do you want like a fancy tree? And you can move it. And we have all these keyboard shortcuts here that can help us uh, scale and do like crazy stuff and do it quick. Want to rotate? Do you want to tilt it? You can tilt it. Like, you can do whatever you want and manipulate these assets and like enhance maps like this, or even create your own from scratch in a matter of minutes. That's amazing because it, it's always been how do you get the assets right? How do you how do you get the things? Because most of us aren't going to sit here and try to make three D assets right. That ruin that you saw it took just tons and tons of man hours so you've brought yeah. a big library that we can just plop down and get started exactly and you know me i'm not a map maker you i don't know if i show you any of my maps but you know my maps in 2d they suck like i i'm really bad at making maps i'm not an artsy person you know i'm more technical yeah, stay in but your, stay in your me, lane but even me i can use this system to make a map i'm gonna show you what this system can really do because it's not only this it does even more so if we look at this we have our tile and we have a big rock and you're like yeah what are you going to do with the big rock you know but we have the fill mode so two clicks and now it makes more rocks and this is like super optimized so it runs very fast even if it's a lot of rocks and we have all these randomized possibilities so I can just like color these rocks, give it like a random color. And now we have a bunch of rocks here. Wow. And they are going to go everywhere. But, you know, we can make terrain with this. We can make whatever you want. So control R and we tile this so it's larger. And then control W, we make this longer and it just goes and goes 
however big you want. And you can kind of make whatever with this. So we can scale, we can do all this kind of stuff here, and we can just gonna make it bigger. I'm not gonna make like some uh, any insane map like you do, but I'm just gonna show you like how quickly you can have like a map done in this. So let's say we have this. So now we just do, we just copy, we just paste. Now we have a second one, you know. Do we want to have this like randomized a bit different? No worries, there is like a random seed, just put some random text and we have like a, a new thing. And you might notice that I'm using this map is just like a default map. It's just add, I just added a skybox and this is also included. And um, in the bottom, we have just a texture from Forgotten Adventures. And we are going to just do one last thing because I don't want to take up uh, all the time on this. But so we have like a water tile here and you can just oh man, make it bigger. And it's basically we have some water so we can even do the stretch mode. And with this, we can kind of uh, make it the size that we we want. It doesn't really like the possibilities are kind of endless. Um, but yeah, we're going to make it just a simple tile and scale it a bit bigger like this. So oh, we can have our water here and then if we really want, you know, we can make it more beautiful by making it like a bit smaller, maybe like uh, some tint here to make it the color of the ocean. And we have a, like a map and like we are ready to play on this cliff. We can just like, you know, slam down some tokens. <laughs> and we are ready. Gosh, it's insane. I love it. Wow. But it doesn't end here. You thought it ended here, but it doesn't. Because we also have a new thing, which is uh, this. So we now have the 3D geometry itself blocking the site. So this map has no walls, but the geometry itself is blocking the site. Wow. So if we go here, we see the token, but if we are like here, we don't. And it's all automatic. And this map was made in three minutes. Wow. <laughs> I actually feel like I can make a 3D map now, like instantly and, and put tokens yeah. on it and have a battle. That's amazing. And there is even more good news for you and other creators because all these assets that are available to make the maps are all uh, a CC zero license. That means that you can use it, use them to make maps that you can sell without a worry. Wow. Well, hear that creators start making your maps. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, this, this is, I think this is what we wanted to accomplish today. As far as like looking at your body of work um, that were specifically around levels in this sort of 3d construction, right? Anything else that you wanted to show us? Uh, no, I think like this is the biggest thing, really, the map building I, that I wanted to show. But there is much more to 3D Canvas, of course. I have plenty of videos that you can watch uh, and plenty of trailers. But yeah, this is I, I think this is going to be the game changer for 3D Canvas, like the ability for anyone with like zero skill to throw together a quick map. That's great. Well, I'm going to be playing with this myself because this, this just blew my mind. Um, okay, well... I think for this session, I think this is pretty good. Um, how do people find you? Uh, well, people can find me on many channels. Uh, my website is like the central place for all my stuff. So that's uh, thereaper93.com. And from there, you can join my Discord and you can like check out all my modules. You can visit my Patreon. You can see like which modules are paid, which not. There are all sorts of videos, tutorials and all other stuff, including your tutorials. Yes. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> I, I will link all of your, that stuff that you just said, I'll link it in the video description so people can just find you easily that way. They can check out your Patreon and see, um, you know, how to, how to support you and then get access to all this stuff. Uh, but this isn't going to be our last session. We're actually going to do a couple more. The next one, you have a whole bunch of things just around combat and enhancing combat. And it's kind of the logical grouping, I think that's next to talk about. So uh, for everyone who's watched this um, in this series, you can, I'll try to link to that next one once it's out. 
and you can see what else Ripper's doing in in that area. And then we're probably going to have a third a third one as well, just because you have so much stuff out there. But thanks for for walking us through this. This is incredible. I learned a bunch of stuff I didn't know before, and definitely feel like I need to get my hands dirty with the three D stuff now. Thank you for having me. I've been like very eager to show you like this stuff because I knew you would like love it, and to have people know that now, yes, you can too make maps easily oh, that's great well ripper you and i both share a common just kind of love for creativity and ideas and you've been a great catalyst for ideas for me and i think vice versa so thanks for everything that you do in the community and for uh, producing all this great stuff and giving us a bunch of stuff to play with in, in the meantime uh yeah thanks for joining and everybody if you have any questions or you want to ask ripper anything ask in the comments i'll link to his discord as well so you can uh you can go uh, riddle him with questions there um but uh, but that's it uh, thanks everybody for joining us and we'll we'll see you next time